here comes a heavy lump of aviation the c5a galaxy variously known by u.s air force types as fat albert the flying cloud or even the lockheed hilton The bombers have left Milton Hall now, making the base one of the USAF's major transport centers with aircraft like this and the C-130 Hercules. But all others pale in comparison with this giant, which remains the largest transport aircraft in the West. Seems to be standing room only on board today. Or maybe they always carry a crowd waiver first class at these displays. Well, we'll be back later with more of the big boys of the air. Meanwhile, here... This prehistoric looking monster is the B-52 bomber. It's an awesome, menacing aircraft especially as the pilot stuffs the nose down to build up speed for this dramatic climb out. It entered service with the US Air Force in 1955 and is likely to remain operational beyond the turn of the century. Here it is performing a disservice to the Suffolk countryside in its crop dusting mode, living up to its Air Force nickname, Big Ugly Fat Fellow, Buff. Some 15 B-52s were lost during 730 sorties against Hanoi and Haiphong during the Vietnam War. 28 crew were reported killed or missing and 33 were taken prisoner. Still very much on active duty is the USAF's B-1B, which outcarries and outflies every other US bomber type. That is according to its proudly biased pilots. With me here on the flight deck is Captain Gary Stanislavski. Gary, what makes this aircraft such a superior one? Well, John, I flew the B-52 bomber at Minot Air Force Base for two years before transitioning to the B-1B. The B-52 has a yoke that you put in an input and takes very long for the aircraft to actually turn. However, with the B-1 with a stick, with a set of throttles, with an increased hydraulic pressure of 4,000 PSI on the system, this thing will turn just like a small fighter. It, it maneuvers very, very well. When we line up with the runway, We'll throw, we'll push up the, uh, the throttles into military power. We'll go into minimum afterburner and we'll check up here that we get four good burner lights. These green lights would, would come on and we'll watch our fuel flow increase significantly. While the pilot is still holding the brakes, we'll go into full afterburner. The fuel flow goes up substantially. We'll release the brakes and at that time start rolling down the runway. We would rotate on the stick at up to eight degrees pitch attitude and then climb out from there. Immediately after being airborne, we'd raise the gear, the flaps, the slats, and then we sweep our wings back to 25 degrees for a climb out in the high altitude cruise portion of the flight. Now, when we fly at the low altitude regime, we'll sweep the wings back to 67 and a half degrees. Um, also, we can sweep them back at higher altitudes, and it's a supersonic airplane, 1.2 Mach. That must be one heck of a ride flying close to the ground at, at virtually supersonic speeds. It's amazing at 400 feet doing 600 miles an hour how fast mm -hmm. things go by. <laughs> I'm sitting on the Vulcan's flight deck and really feeling quite at home in this big delta with her four Olympus engines. And I'm up here with her captain, Flight Lieutenant Paul Milliken. Now, Paul, that control column interests me. It looks more like a sort of fighter type control column. Well, which is a function of the, the, the amount of uh, space available in the cockpit. Obviously, a large uh, steering column would be um, very obtrusive. But uh, having said that, the aircraft itself handles more like a fighter than a bomber or a heavy aircraft. And um, I find to display fire the aircraft with a, a, a single stick control, um, I feel much more a part of the aircraft. Because a lot of display fires, as you know, seat of the pants instincts. 
the takeoff technique for display flying the aircraft, which is a little bit different to, to <laughs> the, the way it is done in the, in the, when the aircraft was in service, um, is that we obviously go up to full power um, and uh, we uh, get uh, accelerated very rapidly because we're at light weight um, up to our uh, takeoff speed of about 145 knots. And then um, it's a fairly uh, smooth uh, but uh, prompt backward movement on the control column to rotate the aircraft steeply into, into a climbing attitude of about uh, plus 40 degrees. Obviously the, uh, the engines are developing about uh, 72,000 pounds of static thrust and uh, we cheat a little bit because the aircraft is obviously, uh, the, the fuel weights are much uh, lower than uh, would be for a standard sortie and that gives us a very good power to weight ratio. Consequently we get this rather attractive steep climb.